Here we want to find the distance between the two parallel planes. To do this, we'll be using the same formula that we use to find the distance between a plane and a point not on the plane, which is the magnitude of the projection of vector PQ onto the normal vector, vector N. To find vector PQ, we'll find one point on each of the two planes, and then use those two points to find vector PQ. Then if we project vector PQ onto a normal vector, and then find the magnitude of that projection, it would give us a distance between the two planes. Let's look at this graphically. Here's a graph of the two planes. Again, if we select, let's say, this point to be point P, and this point to be point Q, this would be vector PQ, and notice how this gray vector is a normal vector to actually both planes, but the initial point is on the yellow plane. If you project this, if you project vector PQ onto the normal vector N, notice how we would have this red vector here. If we find the magnitude of this vector, it would give us the distance between the two planes. So that's why the formula works, and the magnitude of this projection is equal to the absolute value of this dot product divided by the magnitude of vector n. Let's begin by determining one point on each of the two planes so that we can find vector pq. So using the equation negative five x plus three y minus two z equals negative fourteen, because negative fourteen is a multiple of two, to make this easy on ourselves, for point P, let's let x and y be equal to zero. Notice if x and y are zero, we'd have the equation negative two z equals negative fourteen, so z would have to be seven. Looking at the second equation, we have negative five x plus three y minus two z equals negative twenty-five. Notice negative twenty-five is a multiple of five, so for the point on the second plane, which we'll call point Q, since the coefficient of x is negative five, let's let y and z be equal to zero, which would give us the equation negative five x equals negative twenty-five, so x would be positive five. So now we can form vector PQ using these two points. If we project this onto a normal vector and then find the magnitude, it's going to give us the distance between the two planes. So vector PQ in component form would have an x component of five minus zero, that's five, a y component of zero minus zero, which is zero, and a z component of zero minus seven, which is negative seven. And now to find a normal vector to these planes, we can just use the coefficients of the x, y, and z terms, because remember, when we learned about the point normal form of a plane where the plane had a normal vector with components a comma b comma c, the coefficients of x, y, and z did give us the components of a normal vector. So a normal vector would have an x component of negative five, a y component of positive three, and a z component of negative two. Of course, any scalar multiple would also work. Therefore, the distance between these two planes is equal to the absolute value of the dot product, which would be five times negative five, that's negative twenty-five, plus zero times three, that's zero, plus negative seven times negative two, that's positive fourteen. We we'll divide this by the magnitude of vector n, which would be the square root of negative five squared, plus three squared, plus negative two squared. So we have, looks like the absolute value of negative eleven divided by the square root of twenty-five plus nine plus four, that'd be thirty-eight. So simplifying the exact distance would be eleven divided by a square root of thirty-eight units. Let's also get our decimal approximation though. We have eleven divided by the square root of thirty-eight, which is approximately one point seven eight four four. Now we should give the exact distance unless we are told around. 
So we'll say the exact distance is 11 divided by square root 38 units. So going back to our graph, that would be the distance highlighted here in red. I hope you found this helpful.